Hey everybody, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here. And let's resume this beginner ranger guide for Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup in 2020 version 0.25 with this terrific Barachi Hunter of Okawaru. So we've got 128 arrows and I was talking to somebody in the YouTube chat about this and I feel like 128 arrows I'm just making this number up, but I think 125 arrows is the number where I start to feel like I don't have to worry about arrows anymore for the most part. Um, now, if I'm going to go into the Abyss or Pandemonium, that's a different story, but for the regular dungeon, I feel like this is enough arrows to do most fights and then get my arrows and then not have to worry about arrows anymore. You just need to get this kind of critical mass early game so it took us about eight experience levels to get here dungeon five but that's not horrible and i feel like there was only a few fights where i was upset about arrows but i do agree that it is frustrating to not be able to just bring a bigger quiver into the dungeon but say la vie you start with horrible stuff in this game and that's what makes it fun is that you build up i mean I've complained before that the wizard comes into the dungeon with a magic dart spell and a staff and a hat, you know, thinking that that's going to be enough to do anything. But the fun is finding the stuff and building your character up. So really, oh, here's a centaur, and he has a plus three short bow. So this is actually a better bow than we have. Um, I'm going to use heroism, and I'm going to start firing. Okay, now Edmund has appeared. I'm going to fire at the centaur a few more times to see if we can get him before Edmund gets here. I'm going to step back and now I'm, I guess I'm firing at Edmund, unfortunately. I'd like to be hitting the centaur. If I miss Edmund, it will hit the centaur. All right, I'm going to fire one more time. And I'm going to get one more shot. All right, now I'm going to just jump as far as I can down here. And um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to kill anybody. And I've wasted, you know, 13 arrows. But that's okay. I'm going to go up the steps. I'm just going to rest. The idea is I need to take out those targets individually because they're both yellow threat level to me. They're both a little bit difficult. My leap was offline. It's back online now. Remember, you can tell that by the debuff that you get that says minus hop in yellow. So my good escape method was gone. Um... I do have potions of haste and healing and invisibility to get away. I also have a scroll of blinking. So I have a lot of ways to escape, but one of the things that will make you a better dungeon crawl player that, again, I hate to keep coming back to this, but it's a matter of feel and just getting practice and understanding your limitations. But one of the things that will really help you go further in the game is learning when to save your consumables because um, there are all sorts of manner of situation where I, as a imperfect player, get myself into that I need to escape from using a scroll or a potion. And if I don't have any of those and my leap is off, then it's probably game over. So I like to save potions, but paradoxically... If you're a new player, use this stuff first. Um, if you feel it's necessary, use your escape, use your blink, use your stuff, your heal. Just so you can stay alive longer to get more experience with the game. And get, your, get more time with your character. But as you get better at the game, you can start to evaluate, okay, there's two yellow enemies... Um, I don't want to make this situation any worse. I'm going to not use any of my consumables right now. I'll just use my leap. All 
All right, so what I need to do to make this happen is use a different staircase. So remember, if I go down this staircase, then there's going to be Edmund just waiting in melee range for me. Um, and I don't want that. He's going to get some free hits with his mace, and that's just not what we need. So we need to use a different staircase to go down to Dungeon 6. And this yellow asterisk at the upper right corner of the staircase here indicates that I haven't used it. So I can go down and look around. And actually, this staircase is just above the staircase that I came in from before. So you can see all my arrows that I fired. And there's a howler monkey. Zombie. Now, one thing that's worth noting is that um, typically if this was a living enemy, I would just stair dance it immediately up the steps and fight it. Um, because I don't want to fight in this situation. But this is a zombie. And so zombies, undead enemies... Um, most of the time, if not 100% of the time, will not come up the stairs with you. So that's a very good thing if you're trying to run away, but it's a very bad thing if you're trying to actually bring it up and take it on by itself. So I'm just going to have to fight it with my bow in melee range. Luckily, this is a white threat level enemy. It's not very hard. Um, and because it's a zombie, it can't actually do the difficult thing that a... Um, howler monkey can do which is howl and attract enemies from all over the place um, now unfortunately I stepped off the stairs and immediately saw two orcs and one of them is this orc warrior with a battle axe um, I'm gonna look at him he has a battle axe it's not telling us what oh he has chainmail okay so he's wearing chainmail and he has a battle axe um, so this is a a difficult enemy for us. I am going to stair dance this guy. This could go badly, but remember I have several ways to escape, so let's just go up the steps with him. And he did hit us. And he hit us for four. His battle axe can do a lot of damage, and he's strong. But remember, we are now wearing plate mail, so we can handle this guy much better than before when we were wearing ring mail. I'm going to jump away um, as far as I can down to here. And we got a good jump. I'm going to use heroism immediately. And I'm going to start firing at this guy. And oh my goodness, out of the um, kindness of his soul, he's going to try to actually throw his stones at us. He had it said that he was quivering stones but i didn't think he would be so foolish as to try to get into a ranged fight with me but he did for a little bit so this is buying us time his stones yes they can hit us but they will not do nearly as much damage as he will with his axe although he's doing a great job i don't know if i'm just missing him i'm gonna have to use heroism again Yeah, I'm missing this guy. I've missed this guy many, many times. And he does have three evade. So it's important for us to just remember he's dodging. Now we finally got a hit on him. If we can hit him, he's dead. We just missed a lot because he's elusive. But that's why you take that guy up the stairs. Um, ooh, there's some javelins down here. I'm going to pick these up. You do that because he's wearing chainmail, so he's mitigating a lot of damage. We're still not super accurate. Orcs are elusive, and he has armor class, so he's kind of a very difficult enemy for us to hit. But luckily, we were able to use heroism to give us a boost, which is why Okawaru is nice early, and um, we were able to use our leap and fight at range because he had some ranged weapons and wanted to also fight us at range mysteriously. All right, so now there's just two orcs standing by the staircase, so I'm going to just go up the steps um, and fight them both. I'm going to just shoot them. I'm not even going to bother using heroism because they're so bad that you could see that they were gray threat level enemies. Regular orcs are a joke at this point. 
Here's a bullfrog. He's tough. He's like us. He's a frog. We're going to step up. Now, there was a chance that he wouldn't follow us. Frogs can jump around. Um, but anyway, I'm going to use heroism. And I'm going to shoot him. Bullfrogs can actually hit pretty hard. Most enemies in this game that are um, not humanoid. But are like animal or creature type. Can actually hit you very easily and harder than you want. Or at least that I want. So you have to be mindful of that. But our plate mail pretty much um, made him nothing. Let's see. He hit us but did no damage, you can see. And he hit us but did no damage times two. So if I was wearing a robe or even my ring mail, it, he might have hurt me. But our armor class um, helped us mitigate the damage. And that's another aspect of heroism. I want to show you. Look, my armor class is 18. It's normally 15. But because heroism raises my armor skill up and armor boosts the amount of AC bonus you get from equipped items, we actually were able to mitigate even more damage. So this is so heroism not only has offensive benefit but defensive benefit and it's why it is so helpful. All right, let's go back down and here comes the centaur. I'm going to heroism immediately and I'm going to fight him and this is going much better than it was before. The last time it was a, a bit of a closer fight and there was Edmund on the screen. This time we killed him and he's got his better bow that we're going to go take and use. Look how fancy it is. It has some um, nice accessory bits um, on the ends. So I'm going to go try to get it, but we're keeping our eye out for Edmund. All right, I'm going to go pick it up. All right, great. And then I'm actually going to wander back. There he is. So I knew he was around here. I'm going to wander back. And you see how that bullfrog um, covered distance very rapidly. He must have done a little jump there. And so now he's on us, but that's okay. We're just going to take him up the stairs. We are not fighting Edmund right now. I'm going to kill this bullfrog. I'm going to use heroism just so this doesn't get out of control. And um, you can see that my heroism is 10% failure, which is fine. I haven't failed on it yet, luckily. Knock on wood. And there's really no penalty for failing on an invocation. Um, unlike, you know, spells can have miscast, contamination. This would just not work, and I would have to just use it again. Alright. Now I'm going to push uh, lowercase w to bring up my wheeled screen, and I'm going to push w again because that's the key associated with my short bow, and I'm going to Put on this new plus three short bow. And I'm going to drop my old short bow by pushing D to bring up the drop screen. I'm going to select my short bow. Anything else I want to drop? Yeah, my ring mail can go. Um, that's fine. I don't really need to be too picky right now because I have, um, I'm going to have 31 empty slots. So we're fine. You can only carry 52 types of things in your inventory just as a heads up that does become somewhat of an issue later in the game but right now we're good all right so we're not using this staircase because Edmund is right by it we're going to use this one and come down below him and see if we can get very very good range on him looking at my map this hallway would be ideal for getting good range on Edmund so I'm going to go over here and see if we can find him I don't see him. I'm going to step around. I'm just going to pick up my arrows and casually come over here. The purpose of this is to just try to find Edmund at good range. All right, so there he is. And um, he doesn't see us. So I'm going to use heroism. And now he does see us. And I'm going to step back. And I'm going to start firing at him. All right, so he's in range. He has a plus two dire flail of draining, okay? So, um, I don't want to get hit by that. Dire flails do a ton of damage. Um, and draining means that you get hit with a draining debuff, which lowers all of your skills temporarily until you gain experience to purge it. So, I'm actually going to jump away from Edmund. 
just so I don't get drained or at least try to help myself not get drained. And I'm going to fight him here and we'll be fine. Um, we did get drained very, very lightly, but we reached level nine and we killed him. I am going to be raising um, my strengths. And I'm going to rest. I'm going to go butcher this centaur. And I'm going to pick up arrows. And you can see that we found some more arrows. I don't know if Okawaru gifted me arrows and I didn't see that. Um, but we have 166 arrows now. Oh no, the centaur was carrying arrows. Great. So I'm going to go up and be happy. Now I'll show you my skills when you get drained. They turn to magenta. And you can see that, like for example, my fighting has been drained to 2.0. But normally in cyan, it'll show you what it usually is, which is... Oh wait, that's not accurate. I'm sorry. Um, that's the cost to level. Um, my fighting skill has been lowered down to two, but if I push underscore, it'll show me that my fighting is normally 2.4, but it's been drained down to two. My bows are normally 10.4, but they've been drained down to 9.9. .9. So it's a small decrease. This was a minor drain, um, and it will recover quickly after we kill some enemies. All right. So... Let me check out our situation. And we've got a potion of haste. Terrific. All right, now i got a room full of kobolds. Kobolds are not really that challenging. Um, once you get a little bit further, like on D1, if they have slings or a branded thing, they can be hard. But at this point, they aren't hard. However, you always have to pay attention to what's going on with their equipment. So, these big kobolds have um, boomerangs of dispersal, all right? So, that's worth noting, okay, because of exactly that. Now, there was nothing I could do about that. Um, they saw me, and they got an action on me before I could do anything. Boomerangs of dispersal blink you around um, when they hit you, just like anything of dispersal. So... In this situation, it's not really that scary, but it can mess you up by putting you in a position you don't want to be in, um, move you away from the staircase, move you next to an enemy, etc. So you need to be mindful of that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go heroic so I can try to kill these guys as fast as possible. Now, big kobolds are not hard. They just have a lot of hit points, com especially compared to regular kobolds. Like Regular kobolds are basically one shot for me. Um, and you can see I'm trying to kill this big kobold, but it's, you know, he's tough. Here we go. And eventually we get him. Uh, okay, so the notable things here are that, number one, in the lower left, you can see um, it says your life force feels restored. And you see that there is now no longer a debuff on me below my character card in the upper right that says drain in any color so we are no longer drained and um in fact you can look at our skills they're not in magenta we're all good additionally you can see it says that okawaru accepts your kill which he always does but i do want to point out that now we are at two pips of piety so we've been steadily rising on piety even though i've been using heroism so don't be afraid to use heroism thinking that it's going to decrease your piety too much it does decrease your piety, but generally not at, um, to offset the rate at which you're gaining it just by killing enemies normally. So we're building up to new heights. All right, so we see a Nemelex shrine, a fountain, a teleport trap, a hound zombie, and a sky beast. Remember, the sky beast is a di difficult customer. Um, so we're going to come around here, and um, I'm actually going to go over here. And I'm going to go heroic. Um, and I did that because I wanted to make sure that the Sky Beast had not cut in front of the Hound Zombie. The Hound Zombie is not a problem at all. The Sky Beast is. And you can see by the silhouette that the Sky Beast is invisible and behind the Hound Zombie. So I'm just going to start firing. And... Um... I'm going to try to kill the Hound Zombie and hope that the Sky Beast becomes visible by the time 
that this is over. Um, you can see that the arrow misses the hound zombie, but I think I actually hit the sky beast, which is why the arrow landed behind him. I'm not sure, though. All right, so now I'm going to just fire blindly down this hallway. Um, and I'm going to do it again. And now the sky beast has appeared. So I'm still heroic. I'm going to try to shoot this sky beast a little bit and see if we can um, do any damage. You shoot an arrow, something hits you but does, does no damage, you shoot an arrow. It's very, very hard to hit some invisible enemy. I'm going to go heroic again, but we're going to try anyway. And I'm just going to keep firing down the hallway. Boom. We killed it, eventually. We got a good hit on it, and you can tell because whenever you kill an invisible an invisible enemy and you have auto pickup on it'll tell you that it's reactivating auto pickup auto pickup turns off when an invisible enemy is nearby or has gone invisible in your presence because um moving around wildly to get items or even picking them up takes time and you don't want to do that when there's an invisible enemy on the screen so it's protecting you um, and by that logic, you can tell, number one, auto pickup has been turned on, and number two, it says you feel a bit more experienced, and Okawaru accepts the kill. So all of that information is telling us Sky Beast dead, and that's great. So let's just rest, and then run around and pick up some stuff. We have 179 arrows, which means we are just doing swimmingly. There's an altar of Trog if we wanted to get nuts, but we don't want to get nuts. All right, here's a bunch of Orcish Wizards. I'm actually going to go Heroic. They have slowed me. And we killed one wizard. And we're just trying to kill these wizards before they go invisible. Or before they confuse us or whatever. All right, that guy has hasted himself. Let's just fire again. And we killed him. There's a another hound zombie and a regular orc. They're all gone. All right, so let's just uh, move around. Boy, more boomerangs of dispersal for these guys. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'll go heroic just to expedite this process. The iguana did hit us, but we're fine. We're up to 199 arrows at this point, so we are doing just great. I'm just going to go ahead and start tab shooting. Oop, can't anymore. Been hurt too much. And... Now we're really settling in with this character and able to output a bunch of damage. I'm going to look at my... Phantom is kind of hard to hit, but we got him. If anything starts to become too problematic, we can always leap away and go heroic, but I'm just saving it, building up my piety. Um, okay, I'm going to move back. I'm going to go heroic because I need to kill this priest as fast as possible. And we got him. And our base bow skill is actually 11 now. I mean, it's 16 with the heroism, but you get the idea. All right, we're fighting some orc wizards and other orcs that are hanging out together. Orcs do like to travel in packs. And here's a crimson imp. Hard to hit, but he has no wand, so eventually we'll just wear him down. He's not really a threat to us damage-wise without a wand. Ah, we have found Sigmund. All right, so Sigmund the Dreaded is a notorious killer of adventurers early in the dungeon. We have found him a little deeper, Dungeon 6. And we have found him in a really good spot. And what I mean by that is we're really far away from him. And we have a corner that we can back around. So if this goes awfully, we can run. I'm going to go heroic. He has a, a wand of random effects, which is not scary. It could get something good, but it's not that bad. We're just going to go ahead and shoot him. And he's confused us um, by casting Confuse. Um, and I'm going to... 
see if I can hit him. It's going to be hard to hit him, being confused. Uh, he confused us even more. So I'm going to go ahead and drink a potion of curing. I'm going to push Q to quaff a potion, K to drink the potion, and now I'm no longer confused. And I'm going to start trying to hit Sigmund. And we, now we've got a really, really good hit on him. Um, he tried to use uh, a, a little flame blast at us. He cast a spell, and boom, we got him. I hated to use my Potion of Curing because I only have two, but that's what they're there for, to get rid of Poison and Confusion most notably. And we got rid of Confusion and killed Sigmund, so that's terrific. So now we don't have to deal with Sigmund. Did he have anything good? Just a regular Scythe and the Robe. All right, so Sigmund can be very, very hard, but that was a very advantageous scenario to engage him in, and we would have just run away if it didn't go well. Boom. Dungeon 6 in the books. All right. We're going down to Dungeon 7, and this is a bad staircase for us. There's another bad staircase above. Um, I'm going to actually just go heroic. And then I'm going to just fire on this ice beast. Fire on the ice beast. Mmm... I wanted to just try to pull up the Ice Beast, but he's moving a little slower than I expected. And so I don't want to get the Ice Beast and the Scorpion with me up the stairs. So I'm going to go up the steps right now. Um, Shadow Imp tried to cast a Hex on us. And we're going to try to find a different staircase to go down. Alright, this is a much better staircase because we're not surrounded by enemies and we can get a foot hold we can kill the scorpion all right i'm gonna just start backing away at this point i'm gonna take this worker ant upstairs and kill it it has poisoned us but that's okay i'm just gonna wait for the poison to wear off and if i go down this step there'll be a white waiting for me um this step has ice beast It's actually telling me that I've gone down all the stairs, and I don't know if I believe that. Um, but let's see. Yes, okay, so here's the other staircase. Um, oh no, maybe by process of elimination. That's why the asterisk was cleared from it. I'm not sure about that, though. Anyway, I'm going to fire at this imp, and I'm going to try to take him up the steps. Um, and he came up, and that's very nice of him, so let's just fight him. Sometimes imps can blink away and not come up the steps with you and be really annoying, but that guy did. And I'm going to go back to using this other stairwell. I will eat a ration. All right, I'm going to go heroic, and I'm going to try to fight this ice beast. Now I'm going to bring up the ice beast by itself. This guy can hit us really hard if he gets lucky, but he did not. And now I'm going to go down this other staircase, and we're just bouncing around using staircases to get some range on the enemies. I'm going to bring the bullfrog up, use heroism, and blast this guy. All right, now we just have a zombie adder, whatever, no problem. 200 arrows. Ooh, and a book. Wow. This is the best spell book that we could have found, in my opinion, because it has blink in it. Um, we get Magic Dart, Blink, Call Imp, Slow, Conjure Flame, and Mephitic Cloud. All of which are actually pretty good. Now, if I go to spells, you'll see that l even learning a second level spell, I'm terrible at it. Because I'm in plate mail. Um, but, if I want, I can swerve and start learning spell casting and translocations to try to get Blink online. And I think that's an extremely valuable thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just push Shift M to memorize a spell. And I'm going to select Blink with C. And it says memorize Blink, consuming two spell levels and leaving six. So you get spell levels in this game based on your spellcasting skill and your experience level. So we haven't used any spells. We're ninth level. We've got six. We're going to do this. It's a second level spell, so it takes two spell levels, and we're going to say yes. And now we have memorized our first spell. 
Now, because we have translocations as a spell, we can now train it as a skill. You actually have to get a spell of that sp spell school to train it. So you need to memorize it first. You can't like preemptively learn translocations without a reason for doing so. And I'm going to turn on translocations and spell casting and turn off um, bows for the moment as well as armor. And I'm just going to kind of spend some time focusing on getting Blink online. All right, this is a bad spot that I just got myself into. Um, staircase is pretty far away. Okay, I'm going to try to back over here, but these bees are really fast, and they're hard to hit, and they poison you. So um, all kinds of bad stuff for us. So I'm going to step back... And, okay, at least on this square, I'm only getting hit by one thing at a time. All right. Um, I'm going to go heroic. And... Oh, hmm. I'm actually going to drink a potion of haste right here. I have three. Um, and because I have three, that's kind of a luxury. So I'm going to use one and start running away. Now, I'm still not fast. So these bees are moving with me. And I'm going to go up the steps and take two bees. But at least I'm not surrounded trying to get away. I'm going to step up here and step up here. And now I can actually fight. I'm going to go heroic again and start shooting. Once we begin engaging these bees, as long as we can hit them, we're going to be okay. And we're fast as well because of the Potion of Haste, so this is a little bit easier than it would have been otherwise. And I'm going to rest. And quickly get rid of my poison and all other things, and we made it. That might not have seemed dangerous, but that could have gotten out of control really quickly if all three of those bees and the ant were hitting me at the same time as I tried to run away and poisoning me. I could have just died. Um, bees are very challenging until you can get them down quickly and you have resist poison, which I don't. So I needed to use a potion of haste there just to get away. Now, I could have blinked. Um, I'm going to use my identify potion to identify this scroll. It's fog. Um, and I'm going to use another identify on this potion here. And it's cancellation. Okay. I could have blinked. I could have leaped. I could have done other things too if it got really, really bad. But I chose to use a potion of haste because I had a surplus. Um, and we made it. Now I'm not going to use this staircase. I'm going to use a different one. And the white has moved away. Go heroic, fight this bullfrog. And I'm going to take the bullfrog upstairs. Beautiful. All right. So um, I think this is a good place to stop the episode. We've cleared Dungeon 6. We're working on Dungeon 7. We are actually now trying to get a spell online, which is Blink. And I have a 100% fail rate to do it. But if I show you really quickly, if I took off my plate armor... Um, I would be able to cast Blink with 22% fail. The problem is my armor. So it's very hard to cast in plate, but it's a low-level spell. So training this a bit, getting some strength, and raising our armor skill will make it easier to cast in the future. It's just a, an investment down the road because, for example, if I had the Blink spell and could cast it, I could have gotten away from those bees even easier. And that's what you want to have, just some escape mechanisms that are readily available. I hope you guys have an excellent evening or day. I hope you are learning something from this series and enjoying it. And I will check you in the next episode. Take care.